I believe it was called the Aragon Ballroom. Um, and of course, when Bob bought it, he renamed it Will's Point. Bob Wills bought Wills Point in uh, 1947, I believe. And uh, he moved his operation from Fresno, where he had his big ranch and so forth, to Sacramento, thinking that this was going to be home. He was just going to settle down there. And we did for a short time. But uh, then he got itchy feet because Bob didn't stay, Bob Wills didn't stay anywhere uh, very long at a time. I was vocalist with my sister Evelyn, McKinney sisters, and uh, we did all the touring and uh, we did a movie short with them and recordings and the whole nine yards. And uh, that's where Tiny and I met. I, I used to tease him and tell him that I was a playboy or a playgirl before he was a playboy because I was with the band before he joined the band. And we met there, and uh, my sister married uh, Billy, uh, Billy Jack Wills, who was Bob's youngest brother. My late husband, Tiny, was a, uh, the manager of Wills Point, and he began that job, I believe, in 1950, and he worked at, at Wills Point for about four or five years. They had the swimming pool, and uh, in the ballroom there, they had a beer garden. And, uh, the bandstand was on one end, and the beer garden was on the other end. And then the, the uh, dance floor was in, of course, in the center. Of course, the big ballroom, uh, they would play to anywhere from six, eight, hundred to a thousand people, especially when Bob was there. They were very uh, respectful, uh, very interested and tuned in to what they were seeing and hearing. And uh, again, a depth of 10 or 12 people congregated around the front of the bandstand. And they stayed there. They just idolized the Texas Playboys. Well, they, they had a good time, that's for sure. And uh, there was different uh, classes of people. You know, you had the the blue collar, but also there's, there's people came that uh, used to go to the big bands because, uh, you know, Bob Wills' band, the Texas Playboys, was actually, they called it Western Swing, so therefore, uh, that's what it was. It was big band sound with, uh, we used fiddles and uh, guitars and, and string instruments instead of uh, horn instruments. And everybody kept their eye on Bob Wills. You didn't dare look away from him because if you did, he'd point his bow at you to do something, sing or whatever take a chorus. So uh, he had total and complete control of his musicians. The guys always wore white shirts and uh, usually these um, uh, unborn calfskin clip-on ties, black pants and their boots and of course their their hats. They always wore their hats and uh, Evelyn and I always wore tailored uniforms that uh, we had made for us. Uh, something colorful. And then another thing, when we went on the stage at 9 o'clock, we didn't leave that stage until 1. He never took, he never took a break. We just worked. You know, we knew that when we hit the stage, that was it until 1 o'clock. Families used to bring their young children and their quilts and their pillows. And there were not chairs, but benches all on the perimeter of the ballroom. And uh, many, many times when the dance was over, they'd have to gather up their sleeping kids and go. The sad part about it, I never think, I don't think I ever saw Bob Wills out there. And the reason that that's important to me is the very first record that I ever bought in my life was Bob Wills' San Antonio Rose, or new San Antonio Rose. Does everybody remember their first record? I think they should. That's San Antonio. It was just a wonderful time in our lives. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed that experience. And, uh, you know, what can I say? Your early memories uh, are very precious to you.